good Wednesday morning to you. It's Wednesday, January 23rd. I love showing you guys the snowfall. And can you believe that this is our second significant snowfall of this season, 2018, 2019? I showed you in a video, I think it was the second video in November of last year, 2018, our first snowfall, and that's the only one we've had, other than, you know, the occasional one where it just barely covers the ground and the grass is still sticking up and and that's it. And I don't think this one's going to last. We were predicted to get two to seven inches. We've got maybe two, but then it's supposed to turn back to rain, so that's going to make an ugly mess. But for right now, it's quiet and it's soft and it's beautiful. And my soul needed it today. You may have noticed there wasn't a vlog up yesterday. Yesterday was one of those days. It started out good in the morning, but after lunch, my husband started to feel poorly and it was a long afternoon. And at the same time that I was dealing with that, or we were dealing with that, he and I together, I was without water in the barn. I had been since the night before, so I was working on that. It's not a major thing. It's more in the handle. It's not down, you know, I don't need to dig up the hydrant. But it's work, and I'm thankful that we only have a few animals now. And in the end, rather than to keep working on it and trying to divide myself between the house and the barn, I just gave up and carried pails of water from the house down to the barn. And luckily it's not too far, but it was slippery. I slipped twice and jarred my back, but I didn't fall. So that was good. And the animals had water and you know, then, and for those of you who do take care of someone or, you know, any, any stress that you have, even day to day life, it's usually not the big things that end up breaking the bank or breaking the camel's back, as they say, or getting to you. It's finally just a little thing that you just think, why? <laughs> so I don't suffer from depression. I never have. And I'm so thankful for that. But I do get overwhelmed and it seems like I get more and more overwhelmed <laughs> lately. So all in all, about 1130 when last night when my husband finally calmed down and went off to sleep, I just went to bed and got up this morning with renewed hope and this beautiful snowfall and clean white helps. I've been waiting for this and it's quiet. Listen. It's just quiet. Now that'll change when I open the barn door and head down to the barn and the animals hear me coming. And then when I come back to the house and the door opens and my husband hears me coming in. But God bless his heart. When I told him I was going down to check the water and start the chores, he just worries about me being safe. I love him to pieces and we're both pretty lucky. So I'm going to go start chores. I'm not going to take you guys with me to do that this morning because I'll have my hands full. But I hope wherever you are, you're having a few minutes of peace and quiet. I hope to talk to you a little bit more later on. And I just wanted to show you real quick. They heard me. So it's off to the barn. Get the chores done. There's my little buddy. Sushi, why don't you wait down at the barn? I'll be there in a minute. She's such a pill. Look at her chewing on the fence. You tell she was a bottle lamb. Okay, off for chores.
All right, I lied and I'm back. One last tip I want to give you and then a little freebie that I want to show you. If you don't have a lot of equipment and you don't have a separate lazy cape for putting your bobbins on to ply from, lazy cates where your bobbins usually set and you ply from them, you've probably seen this tip before, but I just thought I'd show you a good old shoe box, a couple of old knitting needles, or if you have a wooden dowel stuck through there, fairly tight, you don't want them to go spinning, and your bobbins can go on here and you can ply from these. Now I have three lazy cates and I still use this sometimes. So that's just a little tip to show you. See there's this little hole poked through there. It goes in and out. So that's my little freebie tip. And the other thing that I did want to mention, I failed to mention, is in your learning to spin is to always be sure that your equipment is in good working order. Some of you may have used equipment, you may have inherited a spinning wheel, you may have bought it at a thrift store or an antique store, and that's all well and good, but before you try to learn on it, be sure that everything works. When I learned to spin, I had a hand-me-down wheel, and I struggled with it until I finally went to someone and they said, well, this wheel is warped, and it wasn't spinning freely and properly. And so once I went to something different, I took right off and went. After weeks of frustration, so that's my other tip that I forgot to mention. Be sure that the equipment is all there and be sure that it's in good working order. So there, I really am finished for now. Let's get back to some spinning and have a great day.